Welcome to the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services Egg Freezing Informational Session. Egg freezing is an exciting technology that allows women to store frozen, unfertilized eggs that can be used for fertilization and pregnancy at a later time. The benefits of egg freezing are several. First is that egg supply and egg quality diminish as women age. Egg freezing allows women to store their eggs at a younger age for future use. Also, freezing eggs instead of embryos provides women with reproductive autonomy and eliminates some of the ethical and religious concerns that may accompany embryo freezing, storage, and disposal. Who should consider freezing their eggs? Women who want to delay conception until later in life but are concerned about their future fertility. Women experiencing medical emergencies. Some women may have a medical emergency that may impact their ability to conceive. Women who have been diagnosed with cancer, for example, can undergo certain treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation that may cause early menopause, infertility, and other reproductive problems. Egg freezing prior to these procedures can preserve future fertility. In preparation for the egg freezing process, a woman's ovaries are stimulated with medications to cause multiple eggs to develop. Those eggs are then removed from the ovaries through a procedure called egg retrieval. The eggs are then frozen and stored until the patient is ready to use them. Once ready to use, the frozen eggs, perhaps years later, are thawed and fertilized with sperm in the lab and embryos are produced. After the embryos have grown and developed for a few days in the lab, they are ready to be placed into the woman's uterus. The procedure of placing an embryo or embryos into the uterus is called embryo transfer. Leftover embryos that have been created may be frozen to be used in the future. The process of freezing embryos is called embryo cryopreservation. During this lecture, we will discuss each of the steps in the egg freezing process in detail. Prior to discussing details of the egg freezing process, it may be helpful to briefly review the female anatomy and the structures that are involved in creating and carrying a pregnancy. The diagram on the left side of the screen shows the uterus or womb, which is the area where an embryo implants and a baby grows and is carried throughout a pregnancy. The structure outlined by the black box is an ovary. The ovaries are the location of a woman's eggs. Women are born with a large number of eggs that are usually present from birth through menopause. Unlike men who make new sperm continuously, women are born with a finite supply of eggs and cannot make new eggs. The eggs are stored in small fluid-filled sacs called follicles. Each month during the menstrual cycle, one egg is selected, develops, and matures, then gets released from its follicle in the ovary through a process called ovulation. The egg is then picked up by the finger-like projections at the end of the fallopian tubes and travels through the tube toward the uterus. Sperm that are deposited into the vagina during intercourse swim upward through the cervix, through the uterus, and meet the egg in the fallopian tube. This is where fertilization of the egg takes place. The fertilized egg then becomes an embryo, which travels into the uterus and implants in the lining. The picture on the right side of the screen shows an ultrasound of an ovary. This is the typical appearance of an ovary at the beginning of a woman's menstrual period before an egg starts to mature. The small black circles that the red arrows are pointing to are follicles. Each follicle contains an immature egg. During a menstrual cycle, one of these follicles is selected and grows, and the egg inside of it also matures. During an IVF or egg freezing cycle, the process is similar, but the medications we use stimulate multiple follicles containing eggs to develop and mature. This diagram shows events that occur in a typical menstrual cycle. The bottom of the diagram has numbers which correspond to the day of the menstrual cycle. The first day of a woman's period is numbered as day one of the menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycles are often 28 to 30 days in length. Therefore, approximately one month elapses between the first day of a woman's period in one cycle and the first day of her period in the next cycle. The top panel of the diagram shows what is occurring at the level of the brain during the menstrual cycle. FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, is a hormone that is produced in the brain. FSH send a signal to the ovaries to tell them that it is time to have a follicle with an egg in it to start to grow and develop. During the middle of the cycle, a second hormone called LH, or luteinizing hormone, is produced and causes the egg to become released from the follicle in a process called ovulation. The second panel from the top of the diagram shows hormonal changes that occur during the menstrual cycle. The hormones estrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovary. 
Changes that occur in the follicle in the ovary are shown in the third panel from the top of the diagram. As the follicle containing an egg grows and develops, it produces estrogen. Once the level of estrogen becomes high enough, the brain senses this. This is what causes the hormone LH to be produced in high levels and causes the egg to mature and ovulate. After the egg is released from the follicle in the ovary, the follicle cells then make progesterone to support the lining of the uterus and prepare it for pregnancy. The bottom panel of the diagram shows what is happening in the lining of the uterus, which is called the endometrium. In response to the estrogen and progesterone hormones that are produced by the ovary, the lining of the uterus becomes thicker and prepares for implantation of an embryo. Estrogen helps to thicken the lining and progesterone prepares the lining so that it may support a pregnancy. If no pregnancy occurs, the levels of estrogen and progesterone fall and the lining sheds. The shedding of the lining causes bleeding to occur. This process is called menstruation or the menstrual period. If pregnancy occurs, the ovaries get a signal from the developing pregnancy to continue to make these hormones to support it and the menstrual period does not start. We will now focus on the steps of the egg freezing process. The first step in this process is ovarian stimulation. The same hormones that are produced in the body during a normal menstrual cycle are used in an egg freezing cycle to produce multiple eggs. FSH is used to stimulate the ovaries to have follicles containing eggs develop. During the menstrual cycle, only one follicle with an egg in it typically develops. Since the goal of an egg freezing cycle is to have multiple follicles with eggs develop, the dose of the FSH medication that is used is higher than what is naturally produced by the body. LH is also used sometimes to stimulate the follicles to grow. Since the goal is to be able to remove the eggs from the ovaries prior to them being released by the ovary itself, it is important that a woman does not ovulate the eggs before her egg retrieval procedure. To prevent this from happening, medication is used to prevent ovulation. Some of the medications that are commonly used for this purpose are luprolide acetate or Lupron, Ganarelix acetate, and Cetrorelix or Cetrotide. Luprolide acetate, Lupron, and or human chronic gonadotropin or HCG are commonly used to help eggs mature and prepare them for the egg retrieval process. This diagram shows a commonly used medication protocol using the medication Lupron. Lupron is typically started on day 21 of the preceding menstrual cycle to suppress the internal hormones and ovulation. Approximately 7 to 10 days after starting Lupron, the menstrual period usually starts. This period often comes around the usual time that the woman would be expecting it had she not been on Lupron. On the second day of her period, a woman comes to the office for blood work to check hormone levels and an internal ultrasound. The ultrasound is performed to check the ovaries for cysts and to make sure that the lining of the uterus is shedding and is thin. If these tests are normal, she may start taking the hormone injections of FSH and sometimes LH at the time to stimulate the ovaries to produce follicles with eggs. The average length of time that a woman is on these stimulating medications is about 8 to 10 days. During this time, a woman will need to have several ultrasounds and blood work to see how she is responding to the medication. The doses of medication are adjusted based on the way her ovaries are responding. This is determined by her hormone levels and the size and the number of follicles that are seen on an ultrasound. When the follicles become large enough, an injection of HCG is taken to cause the eggs to mature and become ready for retrieval. Egg retrieval occurs approximately 35 hours after this HCG injection. This diagram shows another commonly used medication protocol for IVF using the medication Ganarelix. Ganarelix is typically started once the estrogen level starts to rise or the follicles start to grow larger. The length of a typical egg freezing cycle using this medication is similar to that of a normal menstrual cycle. When the follicles become large enough, an injection of luprolide acetate and or HCG is taken to cause the eggs to mature and become ready for retrieval. Egg retrieval occurs approximately 35 hours after this Lupron and or HCG injection. The first infertility injections that were developed were made from human urine. Hormones were removed from batches of urine taken from postmenopausal women and then processed. As a result of advances in technology, the same hormones are now manufactured in the pharmaceutical laboratory. These newer products offer high quality, purity, and consistency from batch to batch. Because of technology and cost associated with manufacturing these medications, they are expensive.
Here are some of the different brands of medications that may be used in an egg freezing cycle. Most of the medications are injected with a very small, thin needle just under the skin surface in the abdomen or thigh. This is called a subcutaneous injection. With any medication, there are always potential side effects. It is important to recognize that most patients do not experience significant side effects from the medications used in the egg freezing process. Here is a list of potential side effects that may be experienced. Most of the side effects are very mild and short-lived. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS, is a potential side effect of the medications used in the IVF and egg freezing process. OHSS is a condition in which the ovaries become enlarged. This may result in abdominal fullness, pelvic pressure, pain, bloating, and accumulation of fluid in the abdomen. The severe form of OHSS is very rare, occurring in 0.1 to 2% of cycles. Most cases of OHSS are managed on an outpatient basis and patients do not need to be hospitalized. This may require additional blood work, ultrasounds, and checkups in the office. In more severe cases, fluid through an intravenous line, removal of fluid from the abdomen, or a brief period of hospitalization may be necessary. OHSS usually resolves spontaneously in one to two weeks. At the center, we take many precautions to prevent OHSS from developing. These measures include close monitoring during the cycle and using the lowest effective medication dose possible. In some cases, medications may need to be stopped temporarily during the cycle in a process called coasting. In certain patients who are at risk for OHSS despite these measures, cycle cancellation may be necessary. Using Lupron instead of HCG as the final trigger shot is frequently used in our center to prevent OHSS. Most studies have found that the medications that are used to induce ovulation do not increase the risk of either ovarian or breast cancer. The American Society for Reproductive Medicine came out with a position statement in 2002 on this topic. They stated that more recent research indicates that patients taking ovulation-inducing drugs face no greater cancer risk than the general population. The response to the egg freezing medications is monitored with blood tests and ultrasounds. Blood tests look at the hormone levels and ultrasounds look at the number and size of follicles that are developing. These tests enable us to adjust the dose of medication as necessary to try to optimize a patient's response. Once adequate follicle development has occurred, a final injection matures the eggs and prepares them for retrieval. It is important to recognize that an adequate number of follicles may not develop in every cycle. Ultrasounds are done Monday through Friday at each one of our locations. Weekend ultrasounds are done only at the Farmington office. Blood work is done Monday through Friday at each one of our locations. Weekend blood work is done only at the Farmington office. For consistency of results, we require that all cycling blood work be drawn and run at the center. Any exceptions must be cleared with the medical team in advance. If a patient develops less than two mature follicles in a cycle, the chances of success are very low and cycle cancellation prior to the egg retrieval is often recommended. If this occurs, the team will review the cycle and make recommendations for changes that may improve the results in a future cycle. While most women will develop enough mature follicles to complete an egg freezing cycle, some women are not able to do so despite high dose of medications. This slide shows an ultrasound picture of an ovary during an egg freezing cycle. The ovaries get larger in size from the medications that are used to stimulate them to produce multiple follicles that contain eggs. The large black circles that can be seen in the picture represent the follicles. When the follicles become large enough, there will often be a mature egg inside at the time of the egg retrieval. The eggs are very small and cannot be seen on an ultrasound. All of the egg retrieval procedures are performed in our Farmington office. The procedure room is located in our office on the first floor adjacent to our embryology lab. The embryology lab has specialized equipment for the egg, sperm, and embryos. Personnel with highly specialized training called embryologists handle the egg, sperm, and embryos in the lab and work under microscopes to do so. The egg retrieval procedure is performed with anesthesia called IV sedation, which is administered by a licensed anesthesiologist. Patients are given medication through an intravenous line that helps them to fall asleep for this brief procedure. 
Care is taken to ensure that patients are very comfortable prior to beginning the procedure. This procedure is typically painless. After the procedure, cramping may be experienced but is typically mild and brief. Patients are given pain medication in the procedure room to minimize pain and cramping. The egg retrieval is performed under ultrasound guidance using an internal or transvaginal ultrasound probe which is placed in the vagina. During the egg retrieval procedure, the follicles are visualized on an ultrasound screen and a thin needle is slowly advanced into each follicle. The fluid in the follicle and the egg are aspirated and collected into small test tubes. The photograph on the left side of the screen shows an ultrasound of an ovary with follicles during an egg retrieval procedure. The diagram on the right side of the screen shows a close-up picture of a needle inside of a follicle in the ovary. In this picture, the egg and the surrounding follicular fluid are being aspirated. The photograph on the left shows a test tube containing follicular fluid and eggs. The photograph in the middle shows the embryologist looking at the fluid under the microscope and identifying the eggs in this fluid and counting them. The photograph on the right side of the screen shows what an egg looks like under the microscope. The egg is the round structure in the middle of the picture. It is surrounded by many small cells called cumulus cells that support and nourish it. The eggs are placed in petri dishes and kept warm in an incubator until they are frozen later that day. The egg freezing process occurs in the laboratory. After the eggs are retrieved from the ovaries, they are kept in the incubator for one to two hours to readjust to the environment. After that, the cells that surround the eggs, called the cumulus cells, are removed. The cumulus cells must be removed so that the embryologist can tell if the eggs are mature. Only mature eggs are capable of fertilization. Once the cumulus cells are removed and mature eggs are identified, they are frozen using a series of steps and solutions that slowly remove the water from the cells. The water is replaced with a cryoprotectant solution to prevent the formation of ice crystals which may damage the cells. The process of egg freezing is called oocyte cryopreservation with vitrification. Cryopreserved eggs are stored in a liquid nitrogen which maintains the eggs in their vitrified or frozen state until you are ready to use them. The egg retrieval procedure is generally considered to be a very safe and easy procedure. The risk of complications is very small and is estimated to be less than 1%. With any procedure, however, there are always risks. The most common problems that may be experienced after this procedure are bleeding and infection. There is also a very small risk of damage to organs. The risks of the procedure are minimized by the use of ultrasound to guide the needle into the ovaries. If bleeding does occur, it is usually mild and self-limited and does not require any special treatment. It is very rare to have excessive bleeding that requires a hospital stay, blood transfusion, or surgery. The risk of infection is minimized by using sterile techniques and sterile equipment in the procedure room and by giving patients an antibiotic prior to the procedure. One of the most common questions that patients ask regarding the egg retrieval procedure is, how many eggs will I have? The average number of eggs retrieved is approximately 8 to 10. This means that some patients will have fewer than 8 eggs while others will have more than 10. Several factors contribute to the number of eggs that are obtained. An important factor is the age of the woman, as the number of eggs obtained is age-dependent. In general, younger women tend to get more eggs than older patients do, but this is not always the case. In addition, a woman's response to the medications is a factor. It is important to recognize that while many large follicles will often contain a mature egg, not every follicle will yield an egg at retrieval. Prior to leaving the office after the egg retrieval procedure, a patient will be given information regarding the number of eggs that were retrieved. The day after the egg retrieval, a staff member will contact the patient with egg cryopreservation results. Patients often ask their physician if there is anything they can do prior to starting the egg freezing process to increase their chances of freezing multiple mature eggs. Smoking has been shown to affect egg quality. If a patient smokes, smoking cessation is extremely important. Pregnancy rates in smokers are much lower than those in non-smokers. In fact, smoking may cut stimulation response rates in half. There are also many adverse effects of smoking on general health and the health of the developing baby. It is strongly recommended that patients who smoke quit as soon as possible. Obesity is another factor which has been shown to affect egg quality. Women who are obese tend to freeze less eggs than women who are closer to their ideal body weight.
Body mass index, or BMI, is a way to measure a person's weight in relation to their height. This is helpful in determining whether or not someone is above or below their ideal body weight. BMI may be calculated using the formula shown here, which is weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. There are many free online calculators that may be used to quickly and easily calculate BMI. BMI may be broken down into categories. This chart shows the categories of BMI ranging from underweight to morbidly obese. Obesity is defined as a BMI of 30 or greater. Obesity may be further characterized as mild, moderate, and severe. Excessive weight may place a patient at increased risk for having a complication during a procedure such as egg retrieval. These patients are at higher risk for having anesthesia problems as well as surgical complications. At our center, we have established some guidelines in conjunction with the Department of Anesthesia to ensure that patients undergoing this procedure will be able to do so safely. Our current guidelines are shown here. All patients with a BMI greater than 35 must have a consultation with our anesthesia department prior to undergoing an egg retrieval. Patients who fall into other categories shown here are generally not good candidates to undergo egg retrieval in an outpatient center such as ours. In these cases, weight loss prior to cycling would be highly recommended to ensure the safest outcome possible. If weight loss is not possible, a patient may consider undergoing egg retrieval at a center that performs the egg retrieval procedure at a hospital under general anesthesia. Cryopreserved eggs are stored in liquid nitrogen, which maintains the egg in their vitrified or frozen state until you are ready to use them. While we are able to safely store your eggs here at the center temporarily, we do recommend that you send your frozen eggs to a long-term storage facility that specializes in cryogenic storage. Facilities such as Reprotec are experts in the complexities of cryo storage and security. The center and Reprotec work together to make the transfer process a smooth one. Information about Reprotec will be provided to you at the time of your 1B visit. In order to achieve a successful egg freezing cycle, there are some steps that are critical to the process. These are having a good response to the ovulation induction medication, successful egg retrieval, mature healthy eggs for cryopreservation, and a long-term storage plan for frozen eggs. At the center, we all work together as a team to provide you with the best care possible. Each patient or couple has a specific attending physician that is the main person coordinating their care and management of their cycle. Each physician has specific days that he or she performs ultrasounds and retrievals. Therefore, your physician may not be the physician performing your procedures. However, you should rest assured that although you may not see your physician at every visit, he or she will be aware of everything that is occurring in your cycle and will be the primary person responsible for making decisions related to your care. In addition, all of our physicians are board certified in obstetrics and gynecology, as well as reproductive endocrinology and infertility. These are our doctors at the center. This informational seminar is the first step in starting the egg freezing process. We also refer to the seminar as the Egg Freezing 1A Seminar. If you have not already done so, you should make an appointment with your physician to discuss the specifics of your upcoming egg freezing cycle. We will call this visit the 1B visit. At that appointment, your physician will review some of the information that was presented here, make recommendations regarding your cycle, and answer any questions that you may have. You will also be given lab slips for any additional blood tests that are recommended before you start your cycle and schedule any additional recommended tests or procedures. If you are ready to go, you may also review and sign consent forms for your egg freezing cycle at the visit after speaking with your physician. After meeting with your physician, you will have the opportunity to meet with one of the financial service representatives to discuss your insurance coverage as well as any out-of-pocket costs associated with your cycle. As a final step to prepare for your egg freezing cycle, you will meet with your nurse and complete an online injection teaching. The medications involved in your cycle as well as the injection technique will be reviewed. Detailed information about the timing of blood tests, ultrasounds, and timing of injections will also be provided.
This concludes our egg freezing informational seminar. We look forward to seeing you soon and wish you the very best of luck in achieving a successful fertility preservation cycle.